Hi, this is Eric from Cafe Watercolor. Welcome to another painting demo. Today I want to share with you the process of this painting that I painted from a screenshot from the game Metro Exodus. So the first thing we're going to notice about this particular scene is that it is pretty perspective heavy. So I spent a lot more time to do the drawing for this painting. When you're painting a man-made object like these, like a train or a car or a building and etc. Perspective is very important. Now saying that doesn't mean that you have to take out your ruler and start to measure everything and draw every line perfectly straight. It just means that you need to understand how does it sit in a three-dimensional space. Because if you don't understand that, you are just copying two-dimensional image to a two-dimensional surface. And that might work if you can get the drawing one-to-one, -one, but that's not usually the case unless you try to work with a grid system or something like that. And that's just not how I usually like to work. I took my image reference as a visual reference, nothing more. So I want to take that image and analyze it, trying to get the three-dimensional information out of it and put it on my paper. So even if I don't do my drawing one-to-one -one exactly like the reference image, it can still look believable because I understand how does it sit in a three-dimensional space. So that takes some understanding about perspective and the basic primitives, how do they sit in the three-dimensional space and everything. So that goes pretty heavy on the fundamental side of things. It's a big portion of watercolor essential course. This might be less exciting than wet on wet, mixing color and things like that, but it is the foundation of your painting, especially when you're painting something like these or street scenery. If you don't have that right and you just try to paint on it, things might look awkward and not as believable as they could be. So I eyeball most of the perspective in this drawing and I start off with a very dull 4B pencil so I can easily erase those. And now that I'm getting to a little bit more detail, I'm using a mechanical pencil trying to get more detail into it. Now again, this is a more detailed, tighter drawing than how I usually like to do it just because there's a lot more structures and there's a lot more perspective involved and you really want to get those when you are in the drawing stage because once you're painting you want to focus on color you want to focus on value wetness all that stuff and if you don't have your perspective if you don't have your drawing down you're going to have another thing to worry about watercolor is difficult as is so you don't want to have more headache when you are painting. So when you're doing a painting like this, spend a little bit more time do the drawing and try to get as much detail and as much structure down as you can. Now if you're painting a scenery that doesn't really have a main main structure like just a bunch of mountains and trees and stuff, then you probably don't need to spend as much time doing the drawing like the Cannon Beach painting that I did the other day. Now before I start the final painting, I actually did a value study just to practice that drawing very quickly as well as get the value figured out. This thing is very bright lit by the sun, so what we need to understand is that not everything lit by the sun is light value. So for the blue paint on the cart, even though it's lit by the sun, I still make that as middle value because there are lighter things than that, like the highlights on the barrel and the cloud, and even the dirt is a little bit brighter than that blue paint. So clean up the pencil line just a little bit, and I start my first wash by doing the sky. Now I pre-wet the sky because I want some soft white cloud. For the sky, some part of the sky I actually made it more into a middle value because I want the cloud and the background mountain to be brighter than the blue sky. Actually, sometimes blue sky can be a little bit darker than you imagine, especially in the sunny day. So I paint that blue sky in, went on to wet, create some cloud, and now I start to paint the color of the light 
on the cliffside and the background. So those rock, they are actually pretty bright. And because I'm painting the first layer, which is just the color of the light, I can paint over pretty much everything. A little bit of wet on too wet on the rock just to get a little more color and value variation. And now I start to paint the cart with some blue paint. Now keep in mind I'm painting the first wash. So a lot of things I can just paint over, don't have to worry about that. I'm also going to cover them up with darker paint anyways. But it's good to establish some colors when you are doing your first wash. So some warms on the window and the wooden planks. And now I continue to wash down to paint the dirt. Adding a bit of value in the background cloud. And while the foreground is still wet, do some wet onto wet to create some variations in color, just to make it a little bit more rich. During the wash, I did spray a little bit of water from time to time just to keep the wash moist a little bit longer. It was a pretty hot day, so the wash dried a lot faster. So I'm checking my value study and onto the second wash, which is the middle value. This is going to be a big part of the painting. So I try to premix a little bit of the color. I will make some colors on the fly, but this will be a good starting point. So I started with the blue card because that is a big part of the painting. So notice I use a brush that's a little bit bigger. It will hold more paint and it will be easier to paint a bigger area. Here I switch to a smaller brush, the synthetic brush to paint the yellow stripe. And while that wash is still moist, I added some burnt sienna to add some rust. These are the best when you do that wet on too wet because they are not going to be too harsh and it's going to blend in quite nicely. So the tricky part of it is trying to get this big wash and while it is still moist doing some wet on too wet work and try to continue that shape before it's completely dry. So again, I despray a little bit of water while I'm painting it. It's just that the video is sped up, so you don't really see that. I do have the full unedited demo available as a bonus material for my watercolor essential course. So again, if you are already enrolled in that course, you will be getting this full demo for free. I explain a lot more during the drawing process exactly what I do and what I do it. And during the painting, I will explain the process in a lot more detail as well. There's simply not enough time for this 15 minute YouTube demo. Anyways, I'm trying to continue that wash and I did change the color in the middle of the wash. And here I'm trying to paint the middle value inside the window. I am not worrying about the rusted bars and the window frame just yet. Those are in darker value, so I will worry about those later. Now I mix a sort of a neutral gray, but I add a little bit more warmth to it. So my usual go-to mixture for neutral gray is cobalt blue and burnt umber. So by adding one color more than the other, I shift the balance between warm and cool for that neutral gray. This simple mixture is very easy to work with and a great starting point for me to move to other colors. Okay, connecting the shape to the top. There are a bunch of barrels in this image and that actually makes it quite fun to paint because it really shows the direction of the light and those really pops out as a different primitives. So the train cart is mostly like a box structure, but the barrels are more like cylinders. So when you have these two different structures play off each other, it really makes things interesting. So I start to paint the background cliff, the background rocks. There are a lot of detail in the background, but I'm trying to keeping it very simple. Just some quick brush strokes in the middle value, just to give it some sense of light and dark. And that's about it. And I'm not planning to add more dark 
in the background because I don't want that to compete with the train. So just a little hint of the background detail and that's about it. And here I connect the middle value shape to the front of the train as well. So a little bit of wet onto wet, rust and some other colors. So here I need to be just a little bit careful to paint around some highlights that I want to preserve. But you can see very quickly as soon as I put in some middle value and there is a little bit of contrast, you start to see lighting, you start to see the direction of the lighting and that start to bring out the three dimensional quality to this string, to this structure that I'm trying to interpret. And the tricky part of this is that there is a lot of detail compressed in the distance because the foreshortening, the things that are farther away, all the details and stuff are there closer together. So the trick is trying to simplify those as much as possible using visual language to make things readable without a lot of details. So the first wash is dry and as you can see the foreground gets a lot lighter after it's dry. So I did a glaze, add just a little bit more intensity and do a little bit of wet onto wet, add some grass and things like that, just to make it look a little bit more rich, a little bit more complex. So a little bit closer to the middle value, but not quite. There's still a little bit of subtle change in value when it comes to the final painting. But the general idea of the value study still applies here. Now that I finish with the second wash, I have the middle value and now it's time to fill in the dark. So the bottom of the barrel and the cast shadow that casted by these barrels on the side of the cart. These will be the dark value. And it's also the time for me to get a little bit more into detail. So the dark side of the rope and the cast shadow from those rope those are all dark value and as soon as I put those in you can immediately see the form starting to pop because the lighting was rendered so you have the visual clue where the lighting is and where does it end and those are powerful to interpret the form to make them easier to read and you can feel the three-dimensional quality of all of that so the barrels on the top same scene Darken the bottom of the barrel, also the center of the tire, and start to paint the cast shadow. Try to connect the shape together. Cast the shadow to the top of the train, to the side of the train, and start to give a little bit more occluded shadow as well. So a little bit of detail and now I started to work on those bars outside of the window, the rusted bar and the window frame. And I am not counting how many bars are there. I'm just indicate those details very quickly. This is not a very detailed, hyper-realistic painting. So I just indicate those details. Add a dark side on the window frame to indicate some thickness. And it's amazing how much a single dark shape can do to a form. It creates the structure that makes the scene look three-dimensional. So painting the barrel, paint the dark side, connect that to the cast shadow. And I soften the edge with a clean damp brush to give a little sense of transition. It doesn't have to be really soft. You just need to do that on purpose so the people can feel that you understand how the lighting works and they can get the transition from light to dark. And underneath the train is really dark because it's all in the shadow. So I just add some nice dark paint. I did paint around a little bit to preserve just a tiny little bit of the detail underneath. So dark side to the front of the train and I lift some of the paint up with a clean damp brush to suggest some details inside the shadow. And just a tiny little hint of details in the front. 
you don't want to overdo it, don't want to add a lot more dark there because it's farther in the distance. A little suggestion should be enough. The focus should still be around the blue card just because that's the part that has the most contrast and the color. So we talk about creating depths in our last video. So this one doesn't have as much atmosphere in terms of fog and stuff, but we still conveyed quite a bit of the depths by using perspective and the amount of detail that's used. So things that are further away, less detail, a little bit less saturated, and the things that are up close has more detail and is more contrasted. And here is the finished painting. I really like how it turns out, although there's a lot of works. I really enjoy painting something a little bit more complex from time to time and structure and perspective heavy. I hope you enjoy this painting as well. Again, the full unedited demo is available if you are enrolled in Watercolor Essential course. That being said, I hope you have a wonderful weekend wherever you are. I'm Eric from Cafe Watercolor. See you next time.